In 2017, more than 200 million barrels of beer were sold in the United States. It is the most popular alcoholic drink in America and has been so for some time. And today, 19% of beer sales in the U.S. are from smaller, local breweries. 9% more than only 10 years ago. This means there are more choices for beer lovers than ever before. When you find the right brew for you, it's easy to ask for another beer, please. Hey everybody, I'm Lawrence. And I'm Sarah. And this is Another, Another Beer, Beer Please. Please. Well, we're kind of celebrating a milestone, although it's a milestone still to come. Mm -hmm. But the oldest continuously operating brewery in the, in the world is almost a thousand years old. You may have noticed a link to an article that we posted on Another Beer Please. But Weinen Steifener, yeah, I probably pronounced that terribly. But this is the oldest operating brewery in the world, Weidensteifener. And they make these b beautiful Bavarian style beers. Yes, now this is a wheat beer, so it's still very appropriate for the time of year. Nice, slightly hazy, beautiful golden ale. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be light on your palate, easy drinking. And oh, I have to admit, I can put down a lot of these. See, and I can't say that because I've never tried this beer before. Yeah. So this is going to be a first time for me. <laughs> so what you're going to get is going to be all real. It's all I was going to do an impression there, but I won't. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> now, a wheat beer is going to be a little bit of haze. It's going to have a lovely frothy head. And it's going to have a very a mellow flavor. Yeah, it does foam up. She was complaining about the head I poured. But, oh, it's just... Mmm. Now, see... There are some great American wheat beers that have been made, and of course, wheat beers from all around the world are good. Uh, but Weidensteifener, I just love saying that, Weidensteifener. I'm not even going to try. <laughs> they make consistently great beers. You will not be disappointed in any of their beers that you try. Now, my favorite, unfortunately, the place we went to get this, and sometimes Weidensteifener can be a little difficult to find. Craft brew places, if you have a... A uh, place you can go and buy brewing supplies. They will often have a great collection of domestic as well as imported beers. And if you can get your hands on Weidensteifene, you will absolutely adore this beer. They have a dark wheat beer. They have a crystal wheat beer, which is phenomenal on tap. And then, of course, they have what I would almost consider their flagship beer, the Weidensteifene Weiss Ooh, beer. It definitely smells unfiltered. Yes. Mm -hmm. You've got the yeast, a very unique Bavarian-style yeast right. that they put in this. And this is an old, old brewery. I mean, it. they started brewing beer before the year 1000. They were sacked by one group, sacked by another, burned to the ground four times. Jeez. Yeah, these, these monks, and it's brewed by monks. Thank goodness for beer drinking monks. So even this glass is brewed by monks? Even that glass is brewed by monks. Weidensteifene. The beer monks made. That is the worst Bavarian you accent. Should I, don't, stop. I should stop. <laughs> All right. Mm. Oh, that's good. What do you think? It's actually not as bad as I. Well, I don't say as bad as I thought <laughs> because I don't like the, that unfiltered taste. Right. But, um, no, this is actually not bad at all. Good. I'm glad you like it. This is kind of almost a Belgian style brew. Yeah. Because you're going to have more fruit notes to it, <laughs> almost a banana or clove note yeah. to it. And very low in IBUs. It's only 14 IBUs. Okay. So there's really no bitterness in this beer whatsoever. Just a hint of hops to give it a nice balanced flavor. Now, for some folks, that banana and clove kind of flavor is a real turnoff. And right. so they may not enjoy Weidensteifene. I just love saying Weidensteifen. <laughs> it gets better every time I say it. Every time. But for people who are willing to be adventurous and branch out, it's not overpowering, is it? No. No, not at all. And the taste doesn't even last into, um, like the aftertaste doesn't even last. Mm -mm. So that's that's really nice. I'm actually surprised by that. And I so. I think this is a great beer to have. You know, when you're do, doing the outdoor thing, we've been talking about getting outdoors. Now, of course... Here in Idaho, it's a great rainy day, so we get to enjoy it indoors, which is fine. Mm -hmm. 
But this is a great beer to go with salads, fruits, no. um, mm -hmm. seafood. Weidensteifener or a good wheat beer is always great with seafood. <clears throat> and there's just enough of that hop finish so it's clean. Right. Right. And I think that's probably one of your biggest complaints about Belgians is the flavor lingers after you taste that's it. That's why I don't like it. Yeah. And see, this is a wonderful introduction to that type of beer. We were talking about the Odin's Table beer, mm -hmm. the Belgian from our local brewery, Barbarian. Had a nice finish, nice and clean, and so you were able to keep going and just enjoy the beer. Now, this is a little heavier. This is a 5.4%. Still very reasonable. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Not no. at all. It's not like, you know, those heavy, heavy right. Belgian dark ales that are around 10 or 11%. This is just a beautiful Bavarian style wheat beer. And I really enjoy it. This is really not bad. I was afraid because it, it looks unfiltered and it smells so unfiltered that I would just instantly not like it. But that's not the case. I, I still get put off by the, the banana y mm -hmm. smell, um, clover smell. Because it's not, for me, that's not what I'm seeking out for a beer. Right. But I'm always willing to try something new. As you should be. If you've never tried Weidensteiner Weiss beer um, or Hefe Weiss beer, this uh, wheat style beer from the world's oldest brewery, and I just kind of get a kick out of that. Right. Because if you've been doing something for almost a thousand years, you're doing it right. At least you should be. You would hope so. <laughs> Especially if you've come back from being burned to the ground four times, being destroyed by invading armies several times. Which is uh, fun on a holiday. Yeah. There. <laughs> I don't know. The monastery was destroyed by an earthquake once, and they just kept yes. rebuilding it, and they kept brewing beer. And that's a good thing. I wonder beer. if they kept the same ingredients. Oh, yeah. Really? As a matter, as a matter of fact, the, the king at one time proclaimed that beer could only be made with three ingredients, water, hops, and grain. Mm -hmm. And then they added yeast to that list, because you have to have yeast in there to get the the unique flavors and the fermentation right. going. So. Weinensteifener is one of the oldest breweries that has followed those rules. And so there is not going to be a bunch of fancy ingredients like might be a little intimidating in some craft beers. Right. <clears throat> now, next week is National Craft Beer Week. Mm -hmm. Starts on the 17th, I believe. Yep. So, so that's a couple only, days. Just a couple of days. So Friday we're going to be doing a probably a local craft beer again. Maybe Idaho and maybe Oregon. Maybe Washington. We'll see. Something here in the Northwest. I don't know. I don't know. Because the Northwest has a lot of great beers to offer. But i got to tell you, if you are afraid of imports, this is a wonderful place to start. Weidensteifener is easy to drink. It is unique. It is flavorful. So if you just want a, you know, a generic beer beer, this is not going to be the one for you. But if you like experimenting with flavors, you like trying new things. Right. This could be a beer you'd really enjoy. And how cool is it to say that you've uh, had the world's oldest uh, beer? Mm-hmm. Right? That's pretty awesome. Although I understand them. I think I heard that they found sealed jars in Egypt, and inside was like the world's oldest ever beer in history. I would not try that. I wouldn't try it either, but I think I remember reading the article that people tried it. And I'm like, you're insane. That's a 3,000-year-old beer. People will try anything on a dare. Well, that's true. <laughs> Just look at the cinnamon challenge, you morons. <laughs> See, that was the ultimate hold my beer challenge. Oh, when they yeah. discovered a 3,000-year-old beer. Yeah, hold, hold, hold this. I'm going to try the 3,000-year-old <laughs> beer. Well, this is maybe not 3,000 years, but the recipe is right. centuries, centuries old. And it's crafted by artisans. And that's what I love about beer, is the people who keep brewing it are the ones who love to brew beer. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a local brewery, you should always be trying out local beers and trying something new. Because that's how your taste grows, and you find wonderful things. And you keep trying, and you keep trying, trying and you, you keep, keep asking trying. for... Another, another beer, beer, please! Mm. I'll keep trying these. Oh, I love Irish Steiner. They're crystal wheat beer, though. So well, good. we're going to have to do a review on that one. Oh, the dark wheat. I know you were looking for that one. Oh, yeah. yeah. The dunkel. They do a dunkel that's mm. amazing. Yeah, we'll definitely have to try more of this. This is surprisingly good. It's a wonderful beer. Mm-hmm.